Welcome to Turbo Chef, I'm Chef Doug, and today we're talking about the double batch. The double batch is one oven, one power connection, one split screen controller, and two chambers that work independently of each other. So let's have a look at what's possible in the double batch. To begin with, in the top screen, if I select the menu button, it gives me four temperature options for the top screen, and then gives me four temperature options for the bottom chamber. The chambers take a half American sheet pan or 460 by 330 and the idea of the oven is to be able to cook in batches rather than individual serves. What I'm going to do to begin with is some danishes, some croissants, some scones. So I'm baking in the oven essentially and I want both of the chambers to bake. So in this first instance, I'm going to select bake for the top chamber and then I'm going to select bake for the bottom chamber and the oven will go through a heat up phase. As the oven heats up, once it reaches temperature, it will go into a soak cycle. Once it reaches the temperature and has gone through that minute soak cycle, the menu will appear and then we can start cooking. So our oven is now up to temperature and it's displaying the category options. So within my category options, I now have pastry, frittata, and scones and for my products I have a tray of scones and a tray of beautiful um, croissants on thanks to uh, Bruno and the guys at Baker's Maison for supplying these so I'm going to start cooking these now so I'll cook these in the top chamber and these in the bottom chamber so I place my tray into the oven I select pastry and I select croissant and the program starts automatically I do the same for the bottom chamber I go into my category, which is scones, and I select a whole tray in this particular case. I can do whole trays or I can do half trays. Now that the cooking process is happening, the oven rack is sliding backwards and forwards inside the chamber to simulate going through a conveyor oven. So this works like a conveyor oven in that it's impinged air from the top and impinged air from the bottom and then moving the rack or oscillating the rack backwards and forwards keeps the product that you're cooking nice and even during the cooking process. The advantage of air impingement being that or air impingement forced air technology is air that is a spiral of air that is directed at the food. So we have air from the top and air from the bottom. It's currently moving at a rock approximately 30 kilometers an hour and it's being directed at that food. So we're oscillating the rack backwards and forwards during the cooking cycle. So we get a nice even color on the product, but the direct heat transfer from the impingement makes this a faster cooking process than a traditional convection oven. Same with the scones at the bottom. So beautiful fresh scone dough that was made up this morning. Remember with your scone dough, don't overwork it. You wanna make scones, not rock cakes. Um, so be careful with those. Um, they are now cooking at the same temperature, which is 190 degrees Celsius, but the program is 12 minutes for the top chamber, it's eight minutes for the bottom chamber, and the air velocity in both chambers is different. Once they come out of the oven, I'm then going to turn up the temperature in the top chamber to 260 degrees, while I then cook my tray of danishes in the bottom oven and start doing some mise en place for other products that I'm going to cook later on in the day. So as you can see, incredibly flexible oven. So currently working at the same temperature, top and bottom, but I'm then going to split the chambers and have one working at 260 degrees and one at 190 degrees Celsius. Now that my bottom chamber is up to temperature, 260 degrees Celsius, let's look at changing gears a little bit. You will notice now that the top screen is showing the original menu, which is the frittata, pastry and scones. And the bottom is now showing vegetables, toasties, pizza and protein. So I'm now going to cook in both ovens at two completely separate temperatures. So what I'm going to do first of all is put some roasted vegetables in the bottom chamber and then I'm going to put some finger food in the top chamber at 190 degrees. So I've just got a bowl here for preparation. In this bowl, I am putting one medium eggplant chopped into roughly thumb sized pieces, a dozen mushrooms, the same, 
two onions, medium sized onions, chopped, one red capsicum and one green capsicum, and one large zucchini. I'm then just going to add a little bit of seasoning, so some salt and pepper, and a little bit of olive oil, and we're gonna give that a, um, a bit of a light toss, uh, and then I'm gonna lay it out onto the pan and put it into the oven. Now we'll start roasting these vegetables, and once they have roasted, we will set them aside and then use them for a frittata that I'm making a little bit later on. So we've got all these vegetables in there. This is a lot more than what I'm going to need, um, but it gives you the option to see that we can do quite large trays of food. So I won't use all of this, but it will give you a good idea of what's possible inside the oven. So we'll just give these a bit of a toss get in there with my hands as well, give it a good mix up, get that salt and pepper all the way through, get that olive oil coating, okay? And then I'm just going to start laying this out on the tray and roast it, just as we would traditionally. So just fill up your tray, get plenty on there. We'll use most of this, we won't use all of it, but we will use most of this uh, that's in the bowl onto that tray, just like so. What we will do is we will then open our bottom chamber, slide the tray in, we will select vegetables, and then we will select frittata veg, which is the veg that we've got going on there. So I'm coming now to the end of this cook cycle with my roasted vegetables, and at the same time, I've been cooking my party pies and sausage rolls in the top oven. So again, top oven operating at 190 degrees Celsius, the bottom oven is operating at 260 degrees Celsius. So a unique ability to run two separate cooking chambers in the one oven at two completely different temperatures at the same time. So uh, a minute and 45 seconds left for this bottom one for the roasted vegetables, they will come out. Once they come out, I'm going to set them aside and make up an egg mix because I'm going to use those in a vegetable frittata and then my top tray I will plate up in time for my party. So again, finger food, so trays of finger food, trays of pastries. I'm doing some frittata vegetables at the moment. I'm then going to do on some roasted vegetables, so some potato, some pumpkin, some sweet potato. And I'm going to have those because I'm also going to roast off a tray of chicken breast and chicken thighs, so some Marylands and some breast with the skin on, and then I can serve some chicken and some roasted vegetables. So incredibly flexible, this oven. Uh, the ability to be able to cook two different things at the same time gives great flexibility and is the reason why it's probably my favorite oven within the Turbo Chef range. So counting down now to the last 45 seconds, you can see the graph will give me a countdown so I have visual imaging at all time of what going on inside the chamber. I have the lights which I can turn on or off to conserve, but I'm leaving them on so I can see what's happening inside the chamber while I'm cooking. Or if I'm finding that it's not busy enough, I can actually turn one of the chambers off and only use one chamber at a time rather than keeping heat in both chambers. So last 11 seconds, We've still got uh, just over three minutes on the top tray, so that will come out separately. We sound an alarm for each one of the chambers, and it will visually tell you that the cooking is done. Please check the food. So I'm going to open the chamber using my paddle, because remember it is 260 degrees Celsius inside, and there is my roasted frittata vegetables that we're going to use in a frittata. I'm just gonna close that up now, and then we'll wait for the top chamber to finish. Okay, so we're now down to the last 10 seconds of this cooking cycle. So once again, when the alarm sounds, we will remove the tray from the oven, and then we're ready to go on whatever we wanna cook next. So open your oven using the paddle so you're not putting your hands inside the oven, and remove the product from the oven. Um, so this is the last lot of cooking that I'm going to do now where the chambers are at separate temperatures. And then I'm going to convert both chambers to the one temperature. So this is the beauty of the double batch. As you saw before, I'm cooking in the top chamber 
at, two, at, at, sorry, at 190 degrees Celsius and 260 degrees in the bottom shelf. So the frittata vegetables that we did before, um, I've put them into this dish. I've put in my egg mix, so egg, cream, salt and pepper. And I'm just going to put this in the top chamber and I'm going to bake this off at 190 degrees Celsius. So that's just gonna go into the oven. And as we have done before, I'm going to select frittata and I'm going to select veg frittata and that's going to cook for roughly six minutes. So while I'm doing that in the bottom oven, one of the great things about this oven being able to bake dry trays of product at a time is it's perfect for finger food um, is one of the things. So I've got some uh, pork meatballs here and I've got some chicken skewers here. You might have prawn skewers, uh, you might have arancini, any number of small tapas or finger style food. You can cook those in groups or you can cook them in single trays, make perfect platters for finger foods, for club lounges, for banqueting, anything like that. So I'm just going to put that in the bottom chamber. And again, I'm going to select my category, which is protein. And this is, uh, this is uh, the meatballs and chicken skewers, and we're going to grill those at the same time. So once again, we're cooking at 190 degrees Celsius in the top chamber. We're cooking and grilling at 260 degrees Celsius in the bottom chamber at the same time. So both chambers are working completely independently of each other. Both chambers have their own catalytic converter. So the catalytic converter is a vent that scrubs the air path. So as the air is passing over the food, it's been drawn out the back through the catalyst. The catalyst scrubs that air and takes out the grease, the carbon, the smell, any impurities that may be in the air. It then cleans that air and reuses it in the air system. So the impinged air system, those spirals of air penetrating the food, that's why we're able to cook so quickly. The air impingement system, uh, in both chambers is controlled independently of each other. So this is the reason why we can go from one temperature to the next, choosing different temperatures for the chambers to cook the style of product that we're looking at. The thing that I'm going to do next is once this frittata comes out, I'm going to turn this top chamber up to 260 degrees Celsius and we're going to grill some fish we're going to roast some root vegetables and we're going to grill some chicken breast and then we can plate them together. So I can put some vegetables down. I can put my grilled chicken on top. Um, I've done my fish. So with my fish, I have got some fish with lemon, some fish that's just plain with a little bit of butter and salt and pepper and some fish that's been seasoned. So I've got three different types of fish there for you to have a look at. So you can see how they came out all cooked on the same setting. Same with my chicken. Half the tray is just salt and pepper and the other half of the tray is seasoned. So you can see the difference all cooked on the same setting at the same time. So we're coming down to the last 20 seconds now on the bottom oven. I've got my chicken skewers at one end. I've got my savory meatballs at the other end. These particular skewers are marinated with quite a dark marinade. We will just adjust the programming for whatever types of skewers that you are using. So the sugar content on these is quite high. So we're being careful at controlling that air so that we don't burn that sugar too much. The alarm is sounding. It's telling me that the cook is done. Please check the food. So using my paddle, I'm going to put my paddle into the oven and remove that tray. So I'm just gonna let those meatballs sit there and then I'm going to put my chicken in because my chicken's going to take a little bit longer than my roasted vegetables and I want my chicken to be able to rest before I plate up. So I'm going to put my tray of chicken in to the bottom oven. Again, I'm selecting protein. This time I'm selecting chicken breast. We're going to let that cook. When that comes out, uh, by the time it's rested, the roasted vegetables will be ready to um, plate up and we'll be able to move on to the next dish. So coming down to the last couple of seconds for the frittata. When the frittata comes out, I'm then going to turn the oven back up to 260 degrees Celsius. All the programs that appear at 190 will disappear. And then the only programs that will appear are the programs at 260 degrees Celsius. So 
just taking that frittata out now. I'll let that rest. I'll close the door. I'm going to turn the top oven off. I'm going to select menu and I'm going to select 260. The oven will now warm up to 260 degrees. When it gets to 260 degrees, the menu program that will appear in the top oven will reflect what is showing in the bottom oven. So there, now we can just rotate between the two oven chambers to select uh, what programs that we want um, on whatever chamber is available for me to use.